In this video, we're going to look at some ways to comp other people's solos in a mambo context. In other words, how to help someone develop their solo by matching their intensity as their solo evolves. We're mostly talking about a jazz context here, where someone will play multiple choruses or at least a fairly lengthy solo over an extended vamp. This video assumes that you're already conversant on the various mambo rhythms presented in my book, uh, Essential Latin Styles for the Drum Set. You've all probably seen materials that promise to show you a hundred beats you can't live without, right? These guides sound very appealing, and although they may get you started with one rhythm, you quickly find that one or two beats is not enough to competently play even one song in that style. Most music is simply more complex than that. It's especially true in a jazz or jamming context where a person may take multiple choruses during a solo and just as their solo is developing and growing in intensity, your comping must be doing the same, sometimes even pushing the soloist to great, light, <laughs> to great heights. One of the nicest compliments a drummer can receive is to be told, you make me want to play, to really play. So let's explore some ways to do that. Um, as I said, we're going to look at Mambo here, another video that deals with uh, in more of a Samba context. So contrast is one of our biggest allies. First and foremost, we have to give the soloist room to grow. That means we can't begin a solo at or near full volume. We've usually got to start with something that's fairly quiet and sparse, so there's room to add volume and intensity. The first solo usually starts after some kind of mambo section with cowbell rhythms being played. Uh, if a solo begins at that point, it's a good choice to bring things down a bit and start the solo off with a fairly quiet cascada rhythm on the ride cymbal. How quiet we play depends entirely on the soloist. We must be careful to match his or her intensity along the way. Sometimes a soloist will want to start out in a very robust fashion, and that's good if they've got the chops to expand on that. If they don't, well, that's on them, right? So usually, and in fact hopefully, those solos don't go on too long, if they're like really loud. But uh, coming out at the start blazing can be truly effective, but it's really for the more mature soloists. And as I said, those usually don't go on for too long because they begin at almost a climactic level. Anyway, let's assume a more conventional beginning at a much quieter dynamic. The solo is beginning after a pretty loud mambo section where cowbell rhythms are being played. The best contrast we can provide to that is to start the solo on a ride cymbal at a very moderate volume. You know, and kind of a washy sounding cymbal will work well for this. So don't play much on the snare, just giving enough support to keep the time moving and strong, but giving plenty of room to grow uh, as the intensity grows as we go along. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to start with a songo rhythm on the cowbell in the right hand as though I were playing a loud mambo section, and then I'll bring it down to the, the cymbal. I'll stay there for a few measures and then grow to something a bit stronger. For the sake of brevity, I'll abbreviate the length of time that I stay with each texture to just a few measures. So that would get us almost midway through a solo. Now we've got some other options uh, to grow the solo even further. If we're not working with a conga player, then we can add uh, sort of a, a mock or skeletal conga part on the cross stick and toms. Or we can start adding some punches and accents on the snare drum like this. Alright. 
Finally, at the end of the solo, we can kick back into the songo, and that uh, really ramps things up. It ties kind of a nice, neat bow on things, and um, maybe, especially in a jazz context, we'll play it on the cymbal bell. Um, so, and then I'll kick into the samba. I'll demonstrate that. So that's a good way to develop a solo. We can also play some of those snare drum accents on the highest tom as a shallow accent to simulate the timbal. And we can uh, emphasize those accents on the crash cymbal. There's a lot of different ways that, that we can bring things out. And uh, let's say that it's not the first solo. We've already played the first solo and it's somebody else's turn. Since we've been playing uh, on the ride cymbal, um, and probably on the bell of the cymbal for the end, uh, we want to provide some real contrast for the beginning of the next solo. So I like to go to the hi-hat for this. We don't really think of playing on the hi-hat for solos, but it can be very effective. So, you know, let me, let me demonstrate. I'll go, uh, I'll just start with a songo on the bell of the cymbal and go to hi-hat here. so on. Um, I could have started even without the, the clave in the left hand. That would work too. And then add that. It's just another step up. While playing on the hi-hat, we can ghost the in-between notes uh, with the left hand and the snare. And um, as I mentioned, so that's what this sounds like. or the cross stick. You've got to make sure that the ghosted notes are quiet enough so that uh, you know, they don't take over from the fundamental rhythm that you really want to be the focus of. So I'd then proceed to develop the solo as before, moving to the ride cymbal and using the techniques I've already shown. You'll learn some of your own ways of shading too, developing your own unique deep style. One other important consideration that's unique to mambo is form. So the form of most mambos is fairly complex and different sections call for different rhythms. So besides having a typical song form like a verse, verse, chorus, verse, or AABA construction, um, that might be it for the first section of piece, but there will be some kind of coro y pregón, a call and response. Uh, that may be repeated during the solo section. This is always a very robust, busy, and loud section of the piece. We'll, you know, you'll want to use traditional bell patterns or songo, either on cowbell or the bell of the cymbal, depending on if it's more of a jazz context or a, a Cuban jazz context. Cow cowbell will be used in a traditional format, like I just said. Uh, the cymbal bell will usually be used in a jazzier context. And this is just a rule of thumb, not an absolute. So I hope I've given you some good ideas for comping soloists. As I said, you'll develop your own ways of shading and giving nuance to the proceedings. As always, listen to the masters. You can't go wrong with that. And as always, thanks to my friends at Peisty Symbols for their support over the years, and the Conservatory of Music and Dance at the University of Missouri at Kansas City, where I teach. And most of all, thanks for watching. <laughs>